What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... Guys, I like doing things really fast. Just ask my poor wife. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Guys, this is a T-16 public bounty. Uh, and as you can see, we are teleporting infinitely. And we have pretty much full spirit the whole time, uh, which is really nice. So yeah, let's uh, let's show you how to do this because it's kind of fun. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy and we're back with another Diablo 3 Season 30 video. This is a must-known build in the game. It is the Infinite Teleport Monk. It is a fantastic build for doing pretty much all general farming. The one thing it is not amazing at is XP farming because it is kind of a little bit limited in terms of its power output. But I do think with enough Paragon, and if you did augment it up, it would be a fantastic GR90 farmer. Uh, that's where I think I might well be with it at some point if I decide to try and get those primals uh, and items and embers and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to do some general stuff, like let's say you want to do butcher runs to get the soul shards and gems, it's absolutely S tier at that. Getting keys is S tier. Doing public bounties is S tier. Uh, doing runs for the Counts of Frost to try and spawn Chiltara to get your staff of herding, uh, to get the gibbering gemstone. It's S tier. It's just a really fun build to play. Quite brainless because we've got so much cooldown, we've got so much resource cost reduction uh, that we can just infinitely teleport. So if that all sounds good, uh, a thumbs up brightens my day. And uh, let's get into it and have a look. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix the inner set, which is of course the absolute god tier uh, monk beginner speed build that we've got. So we're going to mix that with three pieces of raiment. So we need a rogue in the cube or potentially on the character. I've got a convention of elements at the moment just simply because it's a good ring. Um, but you could maybe have the rogue here. You could put your squirts in the cube. You could open up your necklace slot. Uh, there's a few other rings that you could take as well. So we'll go through some gearing options. But the reason we take the raiment set is because of this four piece here. Dashing strike spends 25 spirits, but refunds a charge when it does. So provided you can generate spirit and you can do it quickly enough, you can insta teleport. So this means that when you get maps like spaghetti, when you get any bounties that you've got to cover a significant distance, you can just hold down teleport and you will go through it. So the stats basically that we need are resource cost reduction, spirit generation and an attack speed to make the animation on the teleport faster so there are three kind of primary stats so you have to take the raiment shoulders because there's no inner shoulders you have to take the inner belts because there's no raiment belts and you have to take the inner uh, spirit stone because this will drop with spirit regen on it so you want crit chance and spirit regen here the rest of it is completely optional. You just want a pair of gloves that have got resource cost reduction, attack speed, and preferably double crit. Now, shoulders can have mystic ally damage. 15% roll is very helpful. The chest can have a 15% mystic ally damage roll. Again, very helpful. Zodiac ring defaults with resource cost reduction and attack speed. So this is pretty nice. It also has got crit chance. Uh, we do, of course, have, I've got the altar fully unlocked, so I get the resource on crit as well. Now, the Inner's Debo, ideally you want attack speed, resource cost reduction, um, and then also spirit regen, as well as a good mystic ally roll. And you want it ancient, but I've got a non-ancient weapon at the moment, and that is the best that I've found so far for this build. So I'm using that as an example of uh, my primal, self-crafted primal big boy one with the 125 augment on it. It's better, I think, to get the resource cost reduction. But ultimately, that would add probably a good 30-40% worth of damage to the build if I could get uh, a primal one crafted like this. We have got the bindings of the lesser gods, they have to go on the character. We've got the crudest boots, they have to go in the cube. A squirt's necklace gives us double damage when this is up. Cold double crits if you can. Uh, and then we've got conventional elements as we said earlier. Now the Zodiac will also do a lot of lifting on cooldown because when we hit with a resource spending attack we get one second off our cooldowns. Uh, that obviously is fantastic. We're taking the Fragment of Destruction Soul Shard. So what this does is it basically gives us the effect of the Messerschmitt's Reaver. So as we move through enemies we put a mark on them. When we kill them we get one second off our skill cooldown. So it's like having Messerschmitt's Reaver uh, in the cube which is nice. It does also have the executioner effect in that it will execute things at below 10% health. Can be handy for T16 group bounty bosses. We put Injium in the build. Again, this is for cooldown. So every time we hit, we get one second 
off a random skull cooldown with the Zodiac. Whenever we kill something that's marked with a fragment destruction, we get the Messerschmitt effect. And whenever we kill an Elise, we get the Ingeome 10 seconds off all of our cooldowns. So it really is stuffed full of cooldown. If you can pick up some extra cooldown, maybe you could roll crit damage off your gloves for cooldown. If you could maybe get resource cost reduction, cooldown and mystic ally damage on your shoulders. But because we're needing so many stats, obviously it is difficult to put this stuff together. Uh, I of course do have a thousand paragon points, but I've got no augments and a lot of this stuff uh, is non-ancient. So there are definite upgrades I think that we could uh, get. This is just the best bits that I've got so far. Of course we want an enforcer for damage, mine is rank 116, you want Bane of the Trapped, again mine is rank 116. And that pretty much covers the gear. Now in terms of skills, we're taking a very similar approach here, we're looking pretty much for uh, resource cost reduction, spirit generation. We are a little bit squishy because there is not much toughness aside from the fact that the water allies will freeze pretty much most of the enemies we come across except for Juggernaut. But to handle this we've got Serenity Ascension, this is just a complete damage block so you press this you are immune to everything for four minutes and uh, four minutes i wish four seconds nothing can damage you so you need to manage this a little bit because you might need to time it when a boss is about to hit you in a bounty because otherwise you will proc your cheat death but provided you're a little bit mindful it comes back very fast the cooldown doesn't start until it finishes but if you've got ingm active that cooldown is wiped to six seconds then you add on cooldown, the Messerschmitt's Ascent procs, the Zodiac procs, it comes back very fast. But to also handle toughness and resource, we've got Epiphany Desert Shroud. So this gives us some spirit regen and a 50% damage reduction. Again, you're looking to just activate this as soon as it's available. You can play with Insight, this gives you much more spirit regen, but of course, as I say, we've got a little squishy at the moment. So as I power my character up across the course of the season, this is another potential swap putting insight on uh, as we build up our toughness with our paragon and augments and stuff like that. Mr. Gallo, of course, damage, Way of the Hundred Fists is still here for the extra damage, and then uh, teleport with the blinding speed, just giving us that dodge chance again, trying to keep us uh, alive. Cycling Strike Implosion to proc the blazes and to group stuff together for us. Seize the initiative for the attack speed, which is great for the teleport. Cooldown, which is great for all of these skills because Mr. Gallo, when we pop it, gives us resource as well and um, we want uptime on epiphany exalted soul not only for the extra spirit but the spirit regen and a near-death experience uh, as i say cheat death for playing in public because you don't have your follower now interestingly i've gone for the templar we get 10 percent extra spirit regen so when you're on your own it's going to be even easier to play because you get this extra 10 percent 10 percent spirit generated if you're in a public group of course you won't have it uh, the other option is to put on the cheat death but given that I'm going to carry the cheat death, I think it's worthwhile going the 10% on the Templar here. You could do the um, access all skills token. I haven't found one. I just didn't think to save one. Uh, and obviously for solo, that'd be fine because the enforcer works with the Templar. So we'll never die on T16. And then you would get the cheat death and you get the inspire. And then obviously on your skills, you would then take near death off and pick something like unity for extra damage. Uh, or fleet footed for a little bit of move speed but move speed's not that desirable because we can just teleport so fast harmony would be another good shout boosting up our toughness quite a lot now i did mention there are quite a few other ring choices abris band if you're looking to get gold uh, of course you would probably take boon of the hoarder maybe uh, take out your powerful for that you can do a stone of jordan where this convention of element is because it will roll with max spirit max spirit is obviously nice and it would help out with some elite damage or as i said you could do rogue and then you've got a free next loss that could go in the form of because you put squirts in a cube that could go in something like a maras kaleidoscope making you immune to poison or you could pick immune to fire or something like that other option would be to go for a flavor of time on your character and basically just get the extra stat for the cooldown make sure you get some resource cost reduction on it so again, that would help, you know, the more resource cost reduction rolls, the more spirit rolls you have, just the easier uh, the build is to play. So I guess let's give a little demonstration of it in action. Uh, so let's just go and do a Torment 16 Rift. Now, when you get into the Rift, you do need to attack just to spawn your allies. Uh, and then this is it. Now we can just hold down Teleport. And we just absolutely fly around the map. The, the only inconvenience we have is actually picking stuff up 
and yeah you can see you can clear very fast because it does have some wave clear with the with the allies it's not amazing it's not like wiping the whole screen like a crusader or a multi-shot demon hunter but it is still pretty good and like this this is a bad map for it because there's lots of things for us to collide into on the teleport but i'm sure you can get the idea uh, you just whiz around and then gobble up all the good stuff all the loots and it is uh, it is pretty decent so let's move on and go test our bounties so here we go guys we are in a public uh, bounty just complete random lucky dip who we've got uh, but hopefully you can see that anything like this where we have to cover like distance I mean, to be honest, that we, we tend to just, you fly past a lot of stuff. It does take a little bit of getting used to playing. But yeah, you should be you should be very popular as a player coming to do bounties with this build because it is uh, ridiculously efficient. Like even if you go the wrong way, it's just so, so fast to kind of move backwards and backtrack. And something like this where you make a mistake and you accidentally kill the keyboard and don't finish the bounty and then go the wrong way. At least we can rectify that mistake pretty fast. What are you? An idiot sandwich. So we are first finished, so let's go and try and uh, show you what it's like against bosses. Obviously, you do have to be a little careful with some of the bosses that have got the animation interrupts. So as in, like, they um, go to, like, a second phase. You just need to make sure you've got your ascension available. And once you've done a few sets of bounties with this, you will 100% have the hang of it. Uh, pretty easy to play, I think. Of course, a great build if ever you want to try and get boss mode done or complete the campaign in an hour or something like that. But yeah, boss done. Not bad. So we're going to go now look for provision of enmity. Best way, of course, to do this is in a cow realm. If you don't have a cow stick, you can go on to the Temple of the Firstborn. But it's pretty, uh, pretty tasty in here because there's just obviously so many enemies. And Monk, of course, does have the cow stick. Uh, in the loot pool, so you will find enough bovine, bardishes, or bardishes, or however it is you wish to pronounce it. But let's uh, start the event. Hopefully, we'll spawn. Here we go. We have finally spawned one. So let's jump in. Now, this is one of the areas where it is a little harder because you do get your nasty stuff in here. Um, but that's where you just need to be a little bit more mindful with your um, pressing of ascension. Because provided you've got that available, well, uh, you, you're invulnerable. So that is always nice. And look how many death breaths. This is just insane. An insane amount of DBs. And the good thing about bosses when you do get to the boss floors is, is the uh, inner water thingies will freeze them anyway. Again, this would, this would work absolutely fine if we were on four player. You know, if there's four of you hunting for visions it would still completely crush it and obviously as we add like another five or six hundred paragon on maybe i find a better weapon maybe i get uh, some augments done then this thing is only going to get better uh, it certainly isn't going to get any worse now when running through here i will tend to just try and pick up the uh, smaller items because it's normally more than like a full legendary's worth uh, if you get a long one then uh, yeah, it can can take you a while to pick everything up. So I tend to just try and look for, you know, if it's something like braces, I might pick them up because I know I might want a good pair of braces for my monk. But other than that, I'm looking for like soul shards and looking for amulets, rings, belts, just that I can get the most number of like legendaries per run here rather than trying to think about picking everything up. I generally don't want to be going back to town. Again, if I'm looking for, let's say a, you know, set items, and again, I might pick those up because ancient Seth items uh, uh, can be quite handy. And obviously we're looking for the delicious red primal beam always. But we'll pick up braces because they might be useful. Boots again, anything with a modifier on it, uh, I would probably pick up for the class. That just basically means you need to know your class a little bit. There we go, we are at the end. Uh, and that was that was pretty pretty comfortable, guys, even with the lack of toughness shall we say there we go bounty mats gobbled and an inventory full of legendaries 
So that was the build guide, guys. The planner will be in the description. I hope you are enjoying the Season 30 content, and I'll be back with some more videos just as soon as I can. Take it easy, guys. Peace.